Hi, this is, I'm Dan Burling. I am with the Flamingo Group and uh, with EXP. And this I is Beth Riley. Beth Riley, my wife and partner in uh, crime here. Oops, I'm not gonna say that. Um, but what we're doing is we're, every Friday, we've decided to do a market update. And not only with the numbers of what's been going on, but some of the experiences we've had in the market. We're getting a lot of questions from people about what is going on in the market right now. You hear one thing in the press, and we always consider ourselves more uh, boots on the ground. We kind of see what's going on. So we wanna go ahead and, and give updates that we see as well as dispel maybe any uh, rumors that are out there. So what we're gonna do first is go through some of the numbers and we're gonna put it on the screen too, but it is gonna just give you an idea specifically in Bloomington. Beth and I have lived in Bloomington for 29 years in the metro area for 30. We really focus our practice down in this area. So we've got a good handle on it. Uh, single family homes, as you can see, the average uh, price point for single family homes in Bloomington has not changed much. None of these prices have changed much in the last year. Single family homes are right a little under 405,000. Um, and townhomes and condos similarly, uh, closed sales. What we are seeing in the market is less um, activity. There, we still are short on um, inventory. inventory, thank mm -hmm. you. We're short on inventory, but it is not, as the press is saying, it's not negatively impacting pricing yet. We're not seeing that happen. There's still a lot of buyers, even with interest rates going up into the upper sixes and 7% area. And so you can see in closed sales, those are all down uh, significantly. The median sales price is, is a good indicator. Average takes everything in one pot. Median is saying, what is the middle road? Uh, what is the middle number of all of them? So it's not letting higher price uh, homes influence the number. So this is at 375,000. And again, you can see the median for all of them is pretty much uh, consistent. Active inventory, again, is consistent with what we're hearing and seeing is that there's just less out there and uh, inventory wise. And another one is the uh, average days on market. Um, you know, we've had discussions about that. And I think what's happening, you can see 50% increase on single family homes and townhomes are up too. Um, and we can talk about that, but I, I think what's happening is uh, pricing. People are pricing it a little more aggressively, wanting a certain number and putting it out high. And consequently, what happens is the house sits on the market because people you know, have so much information, they know what's going on in the market. Well, and with the price, they're not taking into consideration the value and what it is that we're pricing. So mm -hmm. you have a kitchen that's 35 years old, bathrooms that are from the original build, and you're expecting top dollar for mm -hmm. it. It's not going to happen. Yep. yep. So those are the things that we see happening. So the average price point, what is it per square foot? Do we have that? I do know for our area, five five four three seven, the average price point or average price per square foot is about one hundred and eighty dollars per square foot. So that would be five five four three seven. Um, we just recently sold a house. It's a split level house. Split level homes do not sell as well as two story your colonial style homes or your ramblers or your one level living homes. Those tend to sell better. So we had a split level home go out in, in the market. It was just in the area that's north of Shakopee, Old Shakopee Road, south of 94th Street in that neighborhood. And we figured, oh, price per square foot, it's right around 180, 182. This was for split level homes. We also only price for what has sold. We don't try and say, oh, this is where the market's going. That is not our job. Our, the market will tell us because there's still a lack of good inventory, well-priced homes on the market. There's plenty of buyers, but they're not gonna pay $500,000 for a home that's only worth 425 or 450. So that's what's happening. The well-priced homes that have the value and the price are right, they're selling quickly mm -hmm. and they're selling in multiple offers. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you give the example of what happened on that one. What it went well, up. the one that we did sell, we put it out at 450,000. Everything else that what it was its competitor came out at 500 and 525. We were we went out at 450. We did sell in multiples, so we closed at 471. Beautiful, but we also had multiple offers. We appraised well. We did everything. The ones that went out at 525 and 500, buyers are well educated. They can see everything online, so they knew that this wasn't the right price for this home. They're still on the market. Some of them had up to thirty thousand dollars in price changes on a five hundred thousand dollar home. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so unfortunately what happens, sorry, mm -hmm. but unfortunately what happens is that if you price too high and the market's here and you just keep doing this, you're going to sell down here. You won't even hit market price. You'll actually sell lower than the market. Mm -hmm. So the ones that have been on the market for a long time are now considered the perception. Again, perception is, is that, well, what's wrong with this house? Mm -hmm. Yep. And this is where some of this misinformation about, oh, prices are coming down. No, people are setting them too high. Price is too yeah. high and it's coming down to where the market is. So there isn't a significant change in pricing that we're seeing right now. And there's too many facts that are out there right now too, that are indicating that we aren't going to have a bubble burst, uh, similar to 08. Uh, the, the amount of people that have equity either fully own their home, uh, nationwide is 40% uh, or have a significant portion in equity, you can't have a mortgage crisis if people don't have a mortgage. Right. And uh, also, you know, if you look at um, the uh, demographics, you know, we've got uh, the boomers are selling, we've got, or getting to an age where they're looking at downsizing, and then we've got millennials and Gen Z and all these different groups are looking, they're in the family formation stage and they're looking for homes. So, you know, I think there's a little bit of an adjustment with the interest rate uh, items right now, but our lenders are saying there's plenty of buyers out there. And so again, it comes down to pricing. What I wanted to mention is we're getting a lot of questions on this topic and what's my value of my home. Between 2020, the beginning of the pandemic, and, tw and basically no. 2022 or now, uh, the average, in average increase across the country in value was 40%, 41%. Each area and location is different. What we saw in Bloomington in that period of time is 29% increase in value in equity. We're getting a lot of questions about, hey, what's my home, home worth? If you would like a more, and this is even if you're outside of Bloomington, but if you would like an analysis, uh, um, a comparative analysis of what your home value would be right now for a variety of purposes, uh, just let us know. You can either text me at 612-206-4543 that you'd like that or my email, which is danburling76 at gmail. We'll put those up. But just let me know if you'd like that and we can get that information to you. Uh, the other thing is we're gonna do this every Friday and we're trying to decide what to name it. So give us some ideas. I mean, it could be Fun Facts Friday. Flamingo. Flamingo Fun Facts. Flaming Fun Facts. <laughs> facts. So give us an idea. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Have a phenomenal weekend. Can't wait to work with you. Yep. Bye.